Hi, I'm Desrin from Pantheon Plus. In the July 2022 newsletter, Visionary Realms released official information about the mechanics of Pantheon's death system, which was the first concrete info we've ever gotten about how death will work in the game. Because death is such a fundamental part of Pantheon's design, I thought a dedicated video might be helpful in order to explain it as clearly and quickly as possible. So let's do that. Please keep in mind that everything in this explainer video is subject to change based on testing, tuning, and new information. And while the reference material is pretty thorough, this is still my interpretation of what is written. If I do make any guesses of my own outside of the words of Visionary Realms, I'll try to make note of that and leave my opinions for later or another video. I'll divide this up in a few sections to make this easier to digest. We'll be covering three aspects of the death system, near death, the death penalty, and post death. So let's start with near death. In Pantheon, hitting zero HP is not the end for your character. Instead, you'll enter a state of near death where your character goes prone with very limited mobility and you're also unable to take most actions, and you're given a variable pool of negative hit points. This pool slowly depletes as you lie there, or depletes faster if you choose to move while near death. You can think of this much like Bleed Out from a lot of first-person shooter games, or games like Guild Wars 2 or New World. When this happens, your character drops to the bottom of the enemy's aggro or threat list, that means that, while in a group, your assailant will switch targets when you enter near death. However, you can still receive damage, so the chance of an unlucky AoE might lead you to want to crawl away to a safe place first. Also, if you're brought back from near death multiple times, enemies are less likely to move on to a new target, and might simply finish you off instead. So, how can you be brought back? Well. The most straightforward way would be to receive a heal that puts you back above that 0 HP threshold. Otherwise, when the dust settles and both you and your allies are out of combat, they may attempt to revive you, regardless of their class or role, through a lengthy process which can be interrupted by taking damage. This process can be hastened by having multiple allies attempt to bring the player back from near death simultaneously. But what happens if you don't escape near death? and find yourself dying fully. Well, it's always been known that Pantheon will have a real death penalty to keep death as something you'd rather avoid at all costs. This penalty comes as a direct loss of experience and durability loss for your equipped gear. Keep in mind that Pantheon won't be a game that you just fly through levels on and where field repairs will likely require a crafter of some kind. Keeping your experience will be vital to your character's progression, so death is sure to sting. You can even lose a level if you die at an inopportune time, so be careful. So you've died, and invoked the death penalty. What now? Here I'll lay out four scenarios, from the best case to the worst. Since in Pantheon you'll have multiple choices for how you decide to recover from dying, which will greatly impact how hard that death penalty hits you. Let's start with the best and most obvious scenario, getting a res from another player near you. Should you be so fortunate, you'll receive a portion of your lost experience back immediately. And it's worth noting that this is the only method that actually recovers XP directly. The remaining portion of XP that you've lost goes into something called a soul memory. A soul memory is a bit like an XP bank that can be filled or depleted. When you have stored XP in your soul memory, you'll receive some of it back to your character whenever you gain XP in the future. For example, if you had 100 XP stored in your soul memory, you might receive 5 additional XP on your next 20 kills until the soul memory is empty. A key part of this soul memory XP bank is that it can be depleted by dying additional times, losing those stored memories, as in the XP, forever. So, the only way to regain XP stored in your soul memory is to stay alive long enough to use it all up, to regain those memories. This is a key concept that you'll want to keep in mind as we move on to your other post-death options. Let's say no one is around to give you a res, and so you've got to release. 
This takes you to whichever point you've bound your soul to, so hopefully you've found a point nearby. You respawn with your equipped gear only, and possibly other specific items that are hinted at, but where your body once was, there lies what's called a remnant, a decaying physical form that holds all of your bags and currency until eventually it simply withers away. At this point, you have three options. The most straightforward and least punishing of these is to seek out your remnants directly. Should you make it back to your place of death before the remnants decays, you may recover all of your lost loot and all the XP that you had lost goes to your soul memory to be slowly recalled as you continue to adventure. Again, supposing that you can do so safely. The last two options will require an introduction to a new faction of Terminus, the Eternum. This enigmatic group of remnants seekers finds expertise in the realms of death and profit. Should you be unable or unwilling to venture back to your place of death, seeking out a representative of the Eternum will be your only recourse for recovering your remnants. And they offer two methods. The first supposes that your remnants has since decayed, being left to rot in whatever dark pit you found your death in. If this is the case, it just so happens that the Eternum has in fact recovered it for you already and is willing to part with it. For a price. While this article doesn't state how long it takes for a remnants to decay, I'm under the impression that it is not a short time, so this method is assuming that you've been without it for quite a while, perhaps even days. By choosing to pay the price for your long lost remnants, you're not only given back the bags and currency which it contained, but also some portion of your lost XP is returned to your soul memory to be slowly regained in the future. There is one last option, however, for the brash and hasty. Should your remnants still be at large, but you find yourself unwilling to seek it out, the Eternum will offer to summon it to you directly, for an even greater cost. This method, while being expedient, is also by far the most consequential. You gain absolutely no XP back in any form. Not only that, but it's stated that there will be a risk that some objects might get lost in transportation. This method is a last resort and a gamble, but it is there, should there be no other place to turn. And this concludes my explanation and interpretation of the July 2022 newsletter article. In closing, I'll leave a few points for you to consider, thoughts about the system and potential implications that may further assist or inspire you to appreciate the death system in Pantheon. For one, the death mechanics in Pantheon are not simply mechanical and without fictional explanation. I sense through this article that death fits into the world and story of Terminus in a very specific way, by themes of your character's soul retaining memories that can be reattained by way of gaining experience, or the Eternum being masters of death and turning their expertise into a service. As with everything else in Pantheon, these fundamental MMO mechanics aren't just gameplay, they're lore. Second, nowhere in the article does it state that the Eternum are easily available or numerous. I think it's safe to assume that they will not simply be standing at every bind point and that using their services will be very intentional, not a commonality. Lastly, I think it's worth saying that I do believe the systems described here are very fair and thoughtful to not only all roles, but all types of players that Pantheon will likely see in its community. Having said that, as with most things, there will be a matter of balance and adjustment according to the feedback and the tenets that Pantheon stands to uphold. This means that you, the community, are vital to making sure this system is the best that it can be. We all have varying degrees of preference, but make sure that your feedback is always constructive and with consideration. Thank you for checking out my explainer video for Pantheon's death system. If you'd like to see more videos like this or want to let us know what you think of this reveal, please leave a comment below, tap the thumbs up button, and make sure you're subscribed to Pantheon Plus for future content. See you all in Terminus!